In this section, we're going to have a look at quantitative easing using diagrams. There's a range of diagrams you can use. The money market is very short term, liquid funds. The domestic market and the price of money is the interest rate. So when we say very short term, we mean weeks, days, hours even, where people borrow money for a very short period of time. The bonds market is a little bit longer. So we saw bonds are often issued with frames of two years, five years, 10 years. So we're going to be having a look at the bond market as well. And then the foreign exchange market is the price of a currency against other currencies. And we saw one of those when we were looking at hot money flows. We're going to start with a money market diagram. So this is a demand and supply diagram, but this is the demand for money and the supply of money. And the price of money is the interest rate on the y axis. Now, the money market is a really short period of time. It could be days or possibly weeks or even hours. So the supply of money is fixed in that short time period. So therefore, we have a perfectly inelastic supply curve. The demand curve for money follows the normal rules at very high interest rates or price of money, then less is demanded. But at low interest rates, more money is demanded. We'd like you to pause the video and show on the diagram an impact of the increase in the money supply. So hopefully what we will see on your diagram is a shift to the right of the money supply from S to S1. It still remains perfectly inelastic, but this has caused an extension along the demand curve and the interest rate has fallen accordingly from R to R1. Next, we're going to have a look at the bond market. So we have again a, a microeconomic demand and supply diagram showing price of bonds and quantity of bonds with equilibrium shown at P and Q. Again, pause the video and adapt the diagram to show the impact of the central bank using QE. So I'm hoping you've adapted your diagram to show a rise in the demand for bonds. Remember, the central bank buys the IOUs, the bonds, back from, from institutions, financial institutions, pension funds and corporations. And that demand for those bonds to buy them back will increase the demand for bonds, which in turn increases the face the price of the bonds the market price of the bonds the face value hasn't changed but the market price has gone up and you'll remember in the first part of this lesson if the market price of bonds goes up then the yield will fall in the foreign exchange market again we use a micro diagram we've got price of currency and quantity of currency on the axes with an equilibrium at exchange rate e and equilibrium quantity q we want you to adapt that diagram to show the impact on the forex market of an interest rate falling as a result of quantitative easing So with some luck, you might have shown the supply curve shifting to the right. As the interest rates fall, hot money flows out of the country and therefore the supply of sterling will increase on Forex. And this will lower the exchange rate and increase the equilibrium quantity of pounds on Forex. So now a little think. What happens to the demand for exports and the demand for imports as a result of this fall or depreciation of the exchange rate? So the demand for exports rises and the demand for imports falls. And so we will have an increase in aggregate demand. So. From what I've just said, here we have our ADAS analysis. We've, got, we've moved to a macro diagram with price level and real GDP. 
show on there the effects of quantitative easing. And we can see aggregate demand shifting to the right. As always, we must tell the examiner what has happened to economic performance. So in other words, we've seen inflationary pressure and the general price level rise from P1 to P2. But we've also seen real GDP rise from Y1 to Y2.